worship this morning. Stand all over. Join us together as we worship the Lord today. Hallelujah. Sing this with us. We've waited for this day. We've waited for this day. We gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your presence like a fire, awakening desire, will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason. your hands together and give the Lord praise and honor. He is worthy. Amen. Father, we love you and worship you in this place. Hallelujah.
a breakthrough rising right here right now come on we love you jesus you're worthy of our praise worthy of our honor lord we love you hallelujah oh jesus we lift you up in this place right now come on we gotta sing about the breakthrough again join with us and sing about it
sitting at your home. I know you're thinking about the Lord this morning and wishing that you could be in his house this morning. We wish that you were with us tonight to worship him. We're not looking at empty pews tonight. As we're looking at these pews, we're envisioning you sitting there because we know we want to be together in our hearts. We're feeling that need to be together. And God has given us this opportunity through this medium of technology that we could come together this morning and just sing this song that says simply, I am not alone.
where you're at, if it's morning, if it's afternoon, whenever you're watching this, if you would just close your eyes just for a moment and just picture yourself in the presence of Almighty God this morning and Him holding you in His arms, Him providing the comfort and the peace and the rest that you need. Father, we're calling upon your name this morning, asking that you would comfort the people of God, that you would let them grip and hold on to the promises of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. We don't have to want we don't have to feel alone. We know that you are with us wherever we go. And no matter what this world throws at us, Jesus, we know that you hold us this morning in the palm of your hands. We thank you for that today, Lord. We love you. We honor you. We magnify your name, dear Jesus. Just in your own way this morning, wherever you are, take a moment and give the Lord praise and give him honor because he's worthy because he is everything that we have need of in the midst of this crisis. He is our all in all, and we thank you for that, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your comfort. Thank you for your touch that we sense here this evening, and I know that they're going to sense, Father, as they're watching this on Sunday morning. Let your presence fill their homes and their lives. Touch the families of our church today. In Christ's name we ask it, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. We're so glad that you guys have joined us to worship today. No matter where you're watching, if you're watching on a computer, if you're watching on your phone, no matter how you're viewing this today, we just want you to know that we are praying for you, and we believe God has this situation under control. We don't know what the end result is going to be, but we know the one who does, and we know that he holds our future in the palm of his hand, and we thank him for that. Christway Church is so thankful for you guys. We're thankful for what you do for us on a week-to-week -week basis, how you support the ministries of this church. We're so grateful for that. And once again this morning, we just want to say to you right now, if you were in church this morning, we would be at the time where we would be giving our tithes and our offerings. We would be worshiping the Lord through our giving. And I want to invite you to do that from your home this morning. All you have to do is take your phone. You can log into the web page. You can give your giving that way online, or you can text 205-293-0005, and you can make your contributions that way. Of course, we're not meeting on Sundays right now, so it means money is a little tighter than it normally would be, and we're just asking that you would be faithful in your giving to the Lord, and we know that as you are faithful to him, God is going to be faithful to you. I'm really excited to tell you that our pastor's coming at this time, and he has a word from the Lord for us today. And I want you just to open your hearts today and just let the Lord speak to you as the pastor comes with the Lord's word today. It is so good to see everybody in our spirit. It's the only way I can say it is because we've been thinking of you guys all week. Uh, our staff has been talking about you as we have met uh, from a distance. <laughs> But uh, we just want you to know uh, what, a, what a great week last week was, uh, an overwhelming, uh, great response. And uh, the message has always just kind of been the same from, from what I've heard is um, we're watching this and I didn't expect it to feel as much like church or feel the Holy Spirit like I did. And that tells you the power of the Holy Spirit. It, it, it can't be stopped. It can't be, st the power of the gospel has faced way worse than a coronavirus. I'm telling you, the gospel has faced moments where they said, if you keep on preaching, we're going to feed you the lions. We're going to crucify you. They faced Adolf Hitler and Adolf Hitler as they burned Bibles and, and, and tried to get rid of Christianity and even took the cross and broke it up to make their, their Nazi symbol. It, it, it's faced communist China. It's faced terrible terrible things and yet the gospel is still here and i want to tell you something friend no sickness can stop the gospel you could feel the presence of god right where you're at somebody might be listening to this while you're running down the road and this is your church as you're 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 uh exercising you could feel the holy spirit right there on decatur highway i'm telling you you could feel the presence of god ministering to you and we appreciate you so very much we're going to look at daniel the sixth chapter i've been you know immediately these last couple weeks I always take you know into um, my heart I, I honor to preach the gospel but these last couple weeks I've I've really really have felt the weight of that and I appreciate your prayers and last week I believe God had a word for me and I believe I've got an, something encouraging for you here today so we're gonna look at Daniel chapter 6 
and we're going to look verse 16 through 23. This is a story we're all familiar with, and that is Daniel and the lion's den. But let's look at the end of this story. And it says, So at last the king gave orders for Daniel to be arrested and thrown into the den of lions. The king said to him, May your God, whom you serve faithfully, rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed the stone with his own royal seal and the seals of his nobles so that no one could rescue Daniel. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night fasting. He refused any entertainment and couldn't sleep at all that night. And very early in the next morning, the king got up and hurried out to the lion's den. And when he got there, he called out in anguish, Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God whom you served so faithfully able to rescue from the lions? And then there was an answer. Long live the king. My God has sent an angel to shut the lion's mouth so they would not hurt me. For I have been found innocent in his sight. And I have not wronged you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed in order that Daniel be lifted from the den and not a scratch was found on him for he trusted in his God. I, I want to say that last part one more time. Not a scratch was found on him for he trusted in his God. I just kind of want to talk to you uh, on a thought this morning simply entitled, You Can't Keep a Good Man Down. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, Lord, we love you today. We thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy. Father, I just pray your anointing and your Holy Spirit would be here. Father, Lord, God, I, I thank you for your Holy Spirit, God, and I just pray today, Father, that your anointing would be here. God, we give you glory and honor. In Christ's name we pray, amen and amen. My mind just went here to this sermon. My mind went to this, this word, if, if you will, uh, and there's just a, a few things, and I may have even mentioned one or time of talking about a good man because, you know, we've gone through these, these motions and these, these situations, but I, I want to focus a little bit. What just I wanted to focus on that title was the word down. I, I want to focus on that for just a moment, the word down, because nobody wants to hear that word down. You don't want to hear that, but that's what we're living. We don't want to hear it, but that's what we're living, we're going through, we're we're facing a moment in which we find ourselves down, down as a country. Our morale might be a little down because by now you might be going a little stir crazy, You're being cooped up with your family. Uh, I, I think after this crisis is averted, my calendar is going to fill up with counseling sessions with family who are on the brink of killing one another. I, I, I believe we're going to be there because... It gets hard getting cooped up and not being able to branch out a little bit. But when I was thinking about this, I thought about that, and I just love the title. And it fit, it fit. Matter of fact, I think I even used that title about a year ago, but it just fit here. And I wanted to use this title again. It's a different sermon. But I just wanted to focus on it because that was the word I kept getting in my spirit, is that somebody here today is down. I'm talking to somebody and you're you're down and you're out. You're, you, you've got the weight of the world. You've got problems. You've got issues. You've got these things that are mounting up. And what's worse is, is we're disconnected as the family of God. And it's hard to bear one another's burdens when we can't see each other. We can't touch one another. But I was looking at some videos this week and I, I happened to cross one. And I'm not knocking it. I'm just kind of going on the other side of it. This is what really kind of led me to think and go down this road for this sermon. And it was several videos about people preaching the impossibility of God's people getting this illness. And I just happened to, I, I get that faith, and I do believe that you can crescendo to a place where your faith can rise above certain areas. But I also tell you we live in the real world. And, and, and I get that there are some Christians that believe that you're, you, you, not going to have problems, but the problem is that is, is I guess it's, let's just say that uh, they're not in tune with, let's say, what happened to Paul. Paul was the writer of most of the New Testament. He was shipwrecked. He was whipped. He was stoned. He was bit by a serpent. Uh, that's just to name a few of what he went through. See, the truth of it matter is, friend, you can have faith, and you're going to end up having to face problems. You, you might have all the faith in the world, and just because you have to deal with this doesn't mean you're less of a Christian. 
Let me put it to you this way. You can have the faith of Peter where you can walk out of the jail cell because God has busted open and, and, and led you out. But then there's also James who was in the exact same prison and was killed by King Herod. There's going to be moments when we find ourselves down. When I thought about this, I thought about when the darkest times in my life, in the moment when I'd have to pick myself up off the ground every Sunday to preach a sermon because my spirit was so low, my heart was being ripped out. I would be in the altar with my people because I was going through a difficult time. I'm going to tell you, friend, there, you might be facing a moment where you feel down. And that's what I'm going to tell you, though. You may get down. You may get knocked down. And that's what people might forget about. But it takes the power of God's right hand right out of the equation. Because you want to know why? Because you might get knocked down, but you won't stay down. I'm telling you, yes, friend, I've been knocked to the dirt. Yes, I told you about that story. But I want to tell you something I've learned. You can't keep a good man down. I don't know who I'm talking to today that you have feel like this life has knocked you down. There was over 3 million people filed for unemployment last week. Lives are being ravaged. People are being chewed up. There are people being knocked down to the ground. But I want to remind you that a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but the time of mourning is over. Get up. Rise up. It's a time to get up once again. God may have, uh, uh, have allowed you to go through this season, but he's not going to keep you on the ground. You may have been knocked down, but you're not going to stay down. It's time to get up. The Bible tells us that it rains on the just and the unjust. There are going to be difficult moments. But what I want you to understand is these moments are not a barometer, a spiritual barometer on how strong we are in Christ. Friend, real people have real struggles. Let's be honest. This economy has gone down. People have lost their jobs. There are people that are not working. I came in contact to, with one of our members on their job, and I could sense the stress on them. Just, they didn't have to say anything. I could sense. This is what we're dealing with, friend, and I, I, I just I don't know who I'm talking to today. But maybe you've been knocked down. Just because you've been knocked down doesn't mean you have to stay down. Know that this, Abraham was down when Lot chose the better land and then left him with the leftovers. But uh, you can't keep a good man down because that land turned out to be the promised land. Joseph was down when he spent many years in prison for a crime he did not commit. But he found out you can't keep a good man down because God elevated him to second in command. Moses was down when he was watching his father-in-law's sheep at the lowest point of his life. But the burning bush assured him that he would not stay down. David was down when he was kicked off his throne by his own son. But he found out that his way back because you can't keep a good man down. Peter was down when he failed Jesus. Everyone thought they'd seen the last of Jesus himself when they put him in the grave and they began to laugh and they celebrated. But they found out you couldn't keep a good man down because three days later he rose up with all power and glory and dominion in his hand. You might be on the mat, but I didn't hear the bell just yet. The ten count isn't done. Get up, the battle ain't over with. God can help you. God can heal you. God can see you through. God is the author and the finisher of your faith. And that pin mark isn't done just yet. Get up, for God is going to see you through. You see, my Bible tells me this, and I just feel this word to encourage you here today. The Bible says that although sorrow may last for a night, joy comes in the morning. We might be in the night right now. But let me tell you, as somebody who's lived, as a matter of fact, I know this is weird and this is unorthodox and different, but if you're watching at home and you've ever been through the night, I just want you to say amen. I, I want to hear it again. Let me hear you say amen. If you've ever been through the night, see, I I I've been through the night. And when I want to tell you something, no matter how dark the night gets, it cannot stop the sun from coming back up. If fear was going to get me, 
it should have got me in the night. If failure was going to get me, it should have got me in the night. If the devil was going to defeat me, it should have done it in the night. But if you can feel in your spirit, even though it's dark, you begin to worship. Why? Because your spirit sees something your eyes do not. It feels the sun starting to break the horizon on this earth. It feels the rays about to come up. Your enemy cannot stop your sun from rising. And when it rises, it doesn't rise by itself. It's coming with joy. You might be in the dark, but the dark will not last forever. So I want to talk to you this morning about three things to remember. Three things to remember when you're down. Number one, this might seem a little silly, but a little slobber never hurt anybody. I know that's a, a little slobber. See, I can't speak for you, but I, I really believe like at least 80% of people, at least men would agree on this. When we were younger men, being around toddlers, wasn't a big fan of slobber. You know what I'm talking about? It just uh, it gets everywhere. You know, you see some toddlers, they just, all they do is slobber. <laughs> it, it, they just, you could follow a trail. We, we, we understand that, and, but uh, you, you just the thought. Man, I remember being like 21, the thought of taking a cookie. I'd watch some, some parents dig cookies out of kids' mouth. That just... That just got me. You might be 21, 22 right now, and you're starting to get got by thinking of that. But when you get older and you have a kid and it's your kid, you find out that a little slobber is really not all that bad. Now, by now, somebody might be wondering, what in the world are you trying to tell me, Pastor? Here's what I want to say. Imagine this. Imagine Daniel being surrounded by all those lions. You know what I knew about those lions? They were hungry. How do I know that they were hungry? I know that they were hungry simply because when they threw the officials into the lion's den, the Bible says they were instantly pounced on and killed. They, these lions were hungry. And I don't know about you, but if there's a, a, a common stimulant, a, a reaction that when you're hungry, your mouth waters. When these lions hadn't been fed and down comes Daniel, their mouths we're watering. And maybe you're here today, and that's what you feel like. You, you can feel the lions slobbering. Yes, we're using a good old spiritual Christian word, slobbering. But I, I, saliving, uh, whatever you want to call it. I'm calling it slobbering. You, you, you can sense it, but you're here and you can sense that. You, you feel the lion of fear stalking you. You could feel the lion stalking your business. The stress is mounting up. You're, some of you feel like this disease is circling you like a lion. We're surrounded by lions and they're hungry. They had to have been slobbering. And can I tell you, these lions were getting up all around Daniel. He says the angels shut their mouth. He never said he kept them in play. That's what I'm going to focus on for just a minute. Imagine Daniel watching these lines come right at him and move and brush off to the side. That's what we're living. That's what we're living, friend. You're here and you're living that. You feel this economy turn. You feel that lion walk by. You hear the negative reports on the news and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. You feel all these moments. And when these lions get close enough to you, you might get slobbered on. These are real lions. They're not a joke. You're there in the midst of the den, and you're getting slobbered on. In fact, we're dealing with some slobber-soaked Christians. Fear just salivating over you saying that. This is the one I want. Difficulty saying. Our failure lurching over us. We could have got there, but you need to understand you might be close enough to see the lion, smell the lion, and even some slobber has gotten on you. But a little slobber never hurt anybody. Now, I want to talk to you about this. I, I, at first, it's easy to get worried when these lions are surrounding me. And their slobber is getting on me. Why? Because you don't understand, Brother Donnie, how close I am to getting bit. Every time you feel the lions so close, their, their slobber is drenching you, you... You're living it. That's the way some of us are living like this. 
Any moment this lion is going to decide to bite me. Any moment I'm going to get this illness. Any moment my business is going to go under. Any moment they're going to let me go. Any moment I'm going to face difficulty. But what I want to talk to you today is in those moments, you don't need to let worry take over. But if you'll pay attention to your spirit, there'll be a praise stirring. You know why there'll be a praise stirring? Because the praise will let you know the reason why they're slobbering on you is because they want to bite you in the can't. Slobber denotes hunger. There's a hunger to get you. There's a hunger to consume you. There's a hunger to overwhelm you. But it cannot. You want to know why? Because the provisional hand of Almighty God. That's why there ought to be a praise stir up. My lions would have devoured me hours ago, days ago, years ago, decades ago. But the reason why I'm still here and I might have a slobber soaked shirt is because my God has told him, you can't touch that one. That one belongs to me. I just want to stop here. Stop focusing on the slobber of your lions and start focusing on the provisional hand of God. You're not like everybody else. You're a child of Almighty God. His hand is upon you. The lions would have got you a long time ago. But the reason why you're still here is because the powerful hand of God. So celebrate. Worship right now where you are. Give God glory and honor and thank Him because the lions hasn't got you yet. You might be soaked with a little bit of slobber but slobber ain't never hurt nobody. I'd rather have their slobber than their teeth. I just want you to close your eyes and think about all the teeth that's been wishing to get into you. Bite your arm, bite the back of you, get, to, get a hold of you, ruin you. Think about all the, the devouring that could have got you a long time ago. Then why am I still here? I'm still here because I serve a great God. Well, honey, your God ain't gone anywhere. The same God that got you through your lion's dens in the past is the same God that's going to get you through this. And I don't know who I'm talking to today that you're down. You're down on the ground and there's a lion slobbering all over you. But let me tell you something. You can't keep a good man down. The lions can slobber all they want. They just can't bite. They can slobber. They cannot bite. Come on, let's give God glory and honor in the house. Amen. I, I, I know that might seem a little silly to you that I use the word slobbering, but, you know, it is what it is. And I, I just want to leave you this point with this. Think about this. Think of this disease as lion saliva. See, I, I just think that sounds too fancy. I like slobber. Think of it as lion slobber. It might get on you, okay? But it's God that decides on whether or not it bites you. It is God that is in control. And God loves you, sees you, and cares for you. You might be down, but you can't keep a good man down. Even if we lose somebody, they open their eyes up on the streets of gold. You know why? Because you can't keep a good man down. Let's look at point number two. He, he will, a uh, second thing to remember when down, he will try and block off, isolate, if you will. But let's look at verse 17. It says, a stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed the stone with his own royal seal and the seals of his nobles, so that no one could rescue Daniel. Now think about that. They put a rock over the lion's deal to seal his fate, and then they put a seal on the stone that nobody could remove it. Now, if we can identify with any part of this story, it should be this, because that is isolation. They're saying, we have put Daniel somewhere, and that's where he's going to stay, and by the power vested in me, we're going to make that happen. You see, the enemy wants to do to us what the enemies of Daniel did to him. There's people here today that I'm preaching to that feels like you've been sealed with defeat, that you've been isolated, that you're all alone, that your fear has pushed you aside, that your, your problems have knocked you down, and now they've isolated you, and there's nothing that you could do. I just want to talk about that. That's what the fear of defeat does. Do you know this, friend? Do you know you can be surrounded by people and be lonely? I think about some of the famous people who are so popular, and I dare not speak their name, that end up taking their own life simply because you can be surrounded by people and still feel lonely. That's what fear, that's what difficulty, and that's what the attacks of the enemy can do. It can separate you. 
knock you down, push you down, get you in a place where you're, you're, you're all covered and, 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 and taken away. Knock down. And then push everybody else away because that's what we do in the heart. When we start getting stressed on us, a lot of people shut down. They push people away. They want to be alone. That's what depression will do. And I don't know who I'm talking to, that maybe you're dealing with some of that problem. But I, I want to encourage you today that although they had knocked him down and they had isolated him, and they even put their seal saying nobody can get to Daniel, their thinking was off. Think about this. They were so focused on keeping people out that it never occurred to them that somebody is already waiting for them amongst the lions. What did Daniel say? He said, King, my God sent an angel to shut the lion's mouth. You know the way we like to think of that? We like to think of that the moment the lions got up, here comes an angel swooping in late, just at the nick of time, and shutting lions. Right? But can I tell you something? That's not the way God operates. What I like to think about before Daniel was even lowered in the lion's den, the angel was already waiting at attention. The angel had already got, isn't that a great thought? Before he was lowered, God's presence and God's provision was already there. See, I want to tell you something today, friend. God sees you right where you are. This isn't something that you're just stumbled upon, but God was here long before you were even ready to even think about this. God's provision was this. You know what this tells me? That even when we feel completely isolated, we are never alone. Right where you're at right now, there's an angel, there's a presence, there's a holy presence of God, the Holy Spirit right there with you. There is someone who sticks closer than a brother. There's someone who will never leave us nor forsake us. There is someone who will mount us up on the wings of eagles when we get so weary that we can't go. And there's one that will go with us to even to the far ends of the earth. His name is Jesus. I want to think, encourage somebody who feels all alone. God is already waiting for you in this lion's den. 300 years before I was even born, God knew what I would be facing in this season. He has prepared me, He has prepared my lion's den, and His presence is waiting on me. You didn't stumble in this all alone. So why don't you begin to perk yourself up, speak to your spirit, and say, my God was already waiting on me. Third and final thing to remember when you're down, because when you're down, you can't keep a good man down because his presence is waiting there already on me. But the third thing is, the enemy will try to break what you've been doing. Think about this. The enemy's plan was not to so much destroy Daniel. He wanted to keep him from praying three times a day. You remember they saw Daniel, and Daniel prayed three times a day, and they said, we're going to get this stopped. So we're going to go to the king and we're going to issue an order that if anybody prays, he gets thrown in the lion's den because the attacks of the enemy wants to stop us from doing what we've already done. See, the enemy wants to try to use what's going on to break what has already been taking place in your life of getting close to God. Maybe you just started tithing or worshiping or praying, but the enemy wants to use this pandemic to stop what has already been taking place in your life. He wants to disrupt the church. Well, I just want to stop right here for just a moment. You know, in my lifetime, I can't ever think of a situation like this in which our church is faced. Even on 9-11, our doors were open and our buildings were packed. But I think about this. There's, I think the last time was like 1915, 1918, somewhere around there that something like this took place. It was a different day and age, a, a, a difficulty, a, a, a moment. And I think about this, and churches have been faced with how are we going to gather, how are we going to minister, what are we going to do? I want to brag on these churches. I want to brag on my church because churches haven't let this pandemic stop us from glorifying God. We may be in separate houses, but our spirits are agreeing on one thing. And if any two agree is touching one thing, it shall be done. We're touching 
We're touching with our hearts the kingdom of God. I, I think about how churches continue to give, how churches are continuing to worship, how they're continuing to help one another. I, I think about that. You know what I've learned? The enemy can't stop the church, friend. I am proud of all these churches. I'm proud of our church. I'm proud of how we've taken something, you know what, that could have been a negative. We can't get together. Uh, last time I checked, our video was pushing huge views. You know what that means? We're using it as an outreach tool. We're taking what the enemy meant for evil. He wants to disrupt. Don't allow the enemy to disrupt what God has been doing in your life. I don't know who I'm talking to today that, that you feel like you're facing certain defeat. And, and maybe you, your prayer life has been slacking a little bit. You've been feeling with fear and depression, so your worship's been sliding down a bit. Remember, the plan of the enemy is to always disrupt what God has been doing in your life. We have got to make up our minds. We have got to make up our minds that we are going to stand strong, that we're not going to allow this to stop. I want you to help me continue to put your foot down. You've heard our staff say it. Yeah, we, we, we want to continue to have church, and we're, we don't know. It might be another two weeks, three weeks, a month. Who knows if we can get back together. But let's continue to encourage one another. Continue to your giving. Without your giving, you know, we, we can't do the things that we do. You, the church is, you know, has a bank account like you've got a bank account. We can't allow the enemy to stop the great things that's going on. I, I think back to the, some of the great revival that's been taking place, place this, this year. It wasn't that long ago, a couple, gosh, six weeks ago, I led a, a person to the Lord in my office that had just been coming to church. Think about all the families that have been coming and, and, and getting their life restored. I think about the revival that's taking place in people. You can't let it stop. Don't let what the enemy meant for evil stop from continuing what God has laid on your heart to do. We love you. We thank you so very much. I want to pray real quickly. I want to pray for your week, and I want to pray a hedge of protection upon you. Will you please bow your heads with me? Father, we thank you today. We praise you, Almighty God. Father, Lord, I love you today and thank you with all my heart, God, for your hand of protection that is upon our church. I speak over God, first of all, our, our members that are more past retirement age, Father. I pray, Father, Lord, those that, that, that are a little bit older in years, that have grandchildren, I, I, I pray, God, a, a hedge of protection upon them, upon their immunity system, and I pray that you would be with them. But I also pray, God, for their spirit, for being cut off and, and being isolated. There are widows and widowers that find themselves alone. And Father, I know that's got to be tough. Remind them that your Holy Spirit is there with them. Father, I love you and I praise you and I thank you for all that you do. And God, I ask your anointing, Father, Lord, to touch them and to be with them. I pray for our children and our young ones. I speak a hedge of protection in the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, that you would keep them safe. And over all of our, our families, God, of every age, I pray that you would be with them. I pray for those that are scared on their job, for those who have lost their job, for those that are dealing with businesses, I pray that you would be with them. And I pray, God, that you would keep your hand of protection, not only them, Father, Lord God, but their hearts and their minds, that they need not worry, that God, Lord Jesus, that you're going to see them through. I pray your Holy Spirit, God, be with my people, Lord. God, continue to be with us, and we give you glory and honor. And all God's children said, Amen and amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope to see you guys soon. You're in our thoughts and prayers. God bless.